I actually learned this from Rick of all people. Oh yeah. But, um, so when I start recording, uh, I usually do like a little clap at the start just to like oh, get something yeah, loud. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was exactly it from that. his um his video? I saw this as well. Yeah, how like when movie studios do the little. Yeah, I, I never knew that. Until never I knew that. I never me neither. I, I was like, wait, I've been doing the. Cl I thought I just came up with that. Like, <laughs> I thought I was like a genius. Like, yo, if you clap at the start, you can sync it up in the editing thing. Like that makes yeah. sense. I thought I was just my own creative like solution but no no the movie industry figured that out a minute ago <laughs> what video was that again it was the songs video it was, it was it was one of his year end ones. yeah i think it was the songs one that he did yeah it was the songs one wasn't it yeah that that, that, mm. that fucked me up i was like yo i thought i was on some next level four thinking like yeah uh, i gotta do that too actually Let me do that. <laughs> yeah i'll, I'll, I'll record audio on my end so just so yeah uh, cool uh give me a, give me a sec you'll probably hear you'll hear the clap i think oh yeah when sure. i'm ready Okay, no worries. Keep my ears peeled. You hear that? I actually didn't. <laughs> you didn't hear that? I actually didn't hear it. It was just silent, yeah. Maybe it was just the Discord, like, thing. You know, sometimes, like, certain bits of audio get lost. It's alright, it's alright. I, I, I believe you that you did clap. What's up, everyone? Hello. Welcome to a review. An album review. For the latest release from Mr. Denzel Curry, Melt My Eyes, See Your Future. I'm joined by a good friend of mine. Dan Kingston, hello Dan, how are you today? Hello Buff, um, how are you man? Feeling good, feeling excited, you know, it's actually been a minute since I've done like a proper, I think I've honestly, the Sims video we did is like the last time I did a full album review. Oh like, wow, as long ago as that? Yeah, you know, because I don't really do like, um, I guess I do reactions and like I cover on the roundup, but like a whole video dedicated to an album where I give my full thoughts like in detail. I don't really mm. do that as much these days, so I'm quite excited to slip back into that. The last video that I uploaded to my channel was actually the Sims one as was well. It? So yeah, uh, yeah, you know, yeah. you know, what I was saying at the start <laughs> of the last one where I was, where all my uploads were a little bit inconsistent. Well, <laughs> there's your proof. Hey, hey, go check that if you haven't seen it already. By the way, we had a really good conversation about Little Sims' last album. We did. It was yeah. lots of fun. But yeah, so we're talking about Denzel Curry now. So, all right. I think Denzel Curry is a really great artist. He's generally someone mm. I do get excited for. There's so many songs of his that I could put on at any time and just have fun with it. Where do you stand on Denzel Curry? See, like, prior to this album, where, what was your, like... Right, so, yeah. um... My, my history with Denzel is uh, interesting because oh, yeah? I think he is a great artist and definitely one of... The, you know, he's definitely up there with sort of the greats in modern hip hop music. Sure, I won't argue but, that. But um, yeah. where I stand in terms of his previous albums, now I'd say that Imperial is objectively his best album. You reckon, yeah? If you asked me about three, four years ago, I would have said Taboo. Yeah, really. But, okay. um, but I came back to all his sort of main releases before this one and uh, yeah. came to the conclusion, you know, Imperial. I'd say is his best album, but real, yeah. the one that I come back to the most is actually Zoo, I think. Zoo? Yo, Zoo is fun as hell. I can't even lie, man. I, I love Zoo, bro. Incredibly overlooked project of his, I think. Honestly, yeah, I feel like Zoo just hits hits all the spots it's trying to hit so well, you know? I feel you, the Imperial is really good, man. Yeah, like, Taboo, like, shout out to Taboo as well, but I've always had a hard time, like, really, really, like, getting super into Taboo. So I definitely resonate with how you feel on that. I think we've kind of been in a similar situation where we both kind of, we appreciate Denzel. If he's just dropping something, it's worth, um, it's worth a look, you know? You know, I'd say this, this new one of his is, I'd say it's sort of like the spiritual follow-up to Taboo in a way, in terms of the fact that it's his right. sort of next big, artistically right. bold project Sure, of his. yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of felt like Zoo and Unlocked, you know, they're, they're clearly like, yeah. these were just like, here's some, here's some projects to hold you over. Like, they're, they're well, they're well put together, but... This, this new one feels like the next, like, big one in the Denzel Curry canon. Absolutely. You know? that, that's the thing, that that kind of worried me, you know, actually. Not gonna lie, like, because obviously, I do like Denzel, but Taboo would probably be my personal, personal least favourite of his, like, core albums, which I know maybe is uh, not an opinion people would agree with much, but I think it's just when Denzel goes for subject matter that's, like, talking about the world at large, his mm -hmm. internal struggles, stuff like that. I don't think he offers that much of, like, a unique perspective on those kind of things and it can be often surrounded in like punchlines that are a bit hit or miss this new album is going to be a bit more like serious you know than mm -hmm. say like a zoo so i was yeah. worried that maybe those issues might flare up a bit you know and i was catching a little bit of that in some of the singles i was going to say about taboo as well when i listened to it again recently you know mm -hmm. there were a lot of things that i didn't really have as much of a problem with beforehand in terms of really yeah? the lyrical side of things yeah there were some real just 
<laughs> sort of corny lines alongside all the you know really sort of yeah. in, you know booming and quite dramatic in places right, instrumentals right, right. No, I, bro i feel the same way i think i said this on one of the roundups like that like album feels like it's going for something very serious and um mm-hmm. a lot of the time and then you got the lines like the what's it laundry detergent pussy wetter than a sea urchin it's like <laughs> man like what <laughs> my personal favorite one is the the one on cash maniac about oh, yeah. uh Something about him being at his lowest. No Peter Griffin. Oh my god, the Peter like Griffin. Like... <laughs> See, look. <laughs> See, look. I don't even mind like the odd like corny punchline. You know. If I you mean, can... to be fair, it was a bit of a lot more of a light-hearted track that yeah, one. So yeah, that, it, like, I'll let that one slide can, a bit more. If you can sell it, then it's like okay, sure. I'll, I'll excuse the odd like you know dad joke in that album. I think it was just because like the album felt like it was really trying to like reel me into something like heavy. Obviously on Zoo and on Unlocked, you know. Those projects have like pretty bad lines, you know, throwing mm. light on my shade, that's a lamp, like shit like that. <laughs> like, that's pretty bad, you know. <laughs> I guess with the more fun, freestyled kind of like yeah, ram- rambunctious nature of it, that kind of that's kind of contagious when you hear it. So it doesn't really phase me as much on those projects because I feel like they kind of embrace the nature of them being freestyled and just like energetic and stuff so i guess for me like even though there are definitely bad lines they don't really hinder the experience that the album's going for as much as i think mm. the bad lines kind of contrast awkwardly with the experience taboo is going for you feel me no i'm, I'm with you on that and yeah, that's, um... that's how i feel at least you know i will say getting into the new album now i was pleasantly surprised with this project like i said i was cautious i think he put together a really good album here. overall this is mm-hmm. quality. this to me is one of his better projects. I like that um, he's not been afraid to take a lot more risks with his sound on this one as well, you know. True. I do like that he's sort of venturing into elements of, uh, you know, jazz rap on yeah. a couple of songs as well as something a bit poppier on, yeah. say, Troubles, for example. you got, you know, your sort of boom bap tracks like uh, like Walking, which he releases the first single. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and... or like uh, The Ills as well. Boom yeah, bap. I was literally just about to say <laughs> that one. <laughs> really? I was so, so excited for the album once I heard Zatoichi as well because Oh yeah, yeah that because I, I am a sucker for like jungle production. Of course, yeah, I know you are. Yeah, of course. To see him kind of dive into that was a quite surprising turn. You know? mm. It turned out sick. I thought that song was quite cool, actually. I, it was definitely much more bold and striking than um, coming after Walking. Uh, you know, I, that 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 single prepared me for something a lot different. And then Zatoichi mm-hmm. was like a left hook, like, okay, what's this album really gonna give me? You know, I kind of had to question it like the, the sound of it you know and yeah you're right the sound definitely changes a lot across the project and the main big change i guess with the sound is the jazzier type of production you're talking about which on that first song i'll be i'll straight up say right now first song on this album melt session one man yeah that is straight up top five songs this year for me man i think that's wow like, it, no man. i agree it is, a, it is a great opener i think yeah you know, it, it covers a lot of ground in just that one song actually yeah, I yeah, think. like, that's like, that song might be one of his best songs. I, I think that song's so beautiful. And it's because I think the perspective he offers on that song is actually really interesting. And that's like, like mm. I was saying, that was my problem before. But he's fixed that on this song. Like, on this track, I think how he's talking about his own personal journey and the, the melt your eyes kind of metaphor. Talking about, like, being aware is his definition of melt. He sees his imperfection with his eyes. I think that's what it means. Like, he wants to be aware of his problems so that you can... So you think you as the listener can learn from them. Interesting, unique kind of take on that idea. And um, there were there were plenty of lines on that on that track that really had me kind of locked in listening, like really engaged. And that for me is not what I go to Denzel for. So I was quite surprised when I felt that on that song. And the production from Robert Glasper as well. Oh, beautiful. Stunning. Honestly, I was stunned by the beat on that song. Yeah, and the way it led into walking so perfectly. I, I like, know. I was- just about to say that like, yeah. there's he even references like oh well, i keep walking i keep yeah, walking in the song into, like it's, it's such that, a good lead up to yes, that song and love, and the transition right at the end one of the smoothest i've heard in some time honestly yeah the way the whole record flows i gotta give him credit for and i wasn't even that convinced on walking as a single but in the album man i kind of like it a lot more now <laughs> <laughs> i think the sample is so catchy i when the when the beat like kicks into gear uh, I just I find the whole song just really I'm still a bit shaky on the opening verse. You know, it's whatever. I'm not really as like phased by it anymore. Like it, it just comes and goes, and then the track kind of really kicks in for me. Later mm. on. My experience of of this song, mm-hmm. I think, was somewhat similar to yours. Although, oh, yeah. although I think I probably did feel a little bit more positive overall going into yeah? the okay. album. Sure, but I, sure, sure. I, I do agree with some of the slightly out of pocket lines in that first part of the song. The ice cream, the the ice cream bar. Oh, the ice cream one, yeah, the rocky road. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit weak. And, and the, the Stephen Hawking one is just so filler to me. I'm hawking down the next goal, the name ain't Stephen. Like, that's just, <laughs> just like, man, what? Come on, man. That's so, that's so bad. But honestly, I have no issues with the track after that first verse. From that point onwards, I have mm. no issues with it. I mm -hmm. think even if sometimes his bars aren't that good or, you know, he's not the most convincing and for one reason or another or whatever, like, I feel like he's really good when it comes to just building a song that feels like a journey. And like, Walken is mm -hmm. a great example of that, regardless of any issues uh, you may have, one one may have with it. And yeah, that's evident across this whole album. I feel like the songs here, for the most part, are really, really catchy, solid, and yeah memorable i was just about to say about walking you know i put it in my queue whilst i was walking to work yesterday and i just <laughs> felt like i was on top of the world listening yeah. to it <laughs> yeah definitely it's a good walking song the title wasn't lying the title was not lying no lies were said at all when it comes to the title of that song let's move on to some of the deeper cuts you know so yeah worst comes to worst we got john wayne reference to walk in there yeah right yeah literally he also references worst comes to worst on one of the tracks i think it was the last song or maybe it was angels so i think it was angels oh, I, can't, I can't remember which one yeah, it was he actually. says like yeah, and you gotta fade me if worst comes to worst or something like that i think it was on angels yeah that song worst comes to worst man that i was i was thinking right away this beat sounds like 2000s lincoln park or some shit is what it made me think oh, of. Oh, right. Like, minus okay. the, you know, I guess, like, the fucking new metal guitars, I guess. But it, <laughs> but it sounded like some shit, like, Mike Shinoda would rap on. DJ scratches and everything. Yeah, with the scratches and shit. Yeah, it sounded like a Linkin Park type beat or something. Which was n in no way a bad thing, because I am obviously a Linkin Park fan. That's my childhood. So, like, I was right there at home with it. And uh, he even had some nice bars, man. Like, the they draw guns, so how can lead erase me? That was cool. I thought that song was quite nice. I wouldn't say it's like a super god-level standout track, but it was a, a nice change of pace and kept the album, kept the momentum going. I feel like the next few songs, to be honest, after Walking, you know, while I do like them, I feel like, you know, they're not songs that I come back mm -hmm. to that much on their own, but yeah. they're, they're just nice to have on just to yeah, keep the flow sure, of the album. Sure thing, yeah, I can, I can see that. Yeah, they don't, they don't really stand by themselves that strongly they, they, they just work really nicely for the for the record john mm -hmm. wayne um yeah i found that beat super like uh psychedelic like kind of trippy and didn't was... peggy produce this one yes no he did yeah no he did it <laughs> that's funny you said that because um i was listening to the beat thinking like yo who made this beat and then i heard the discord fucking notification noise all distorted i'm like wait what that's peggy <laughs> i'm like that's gotta be chafe there's no one else who would put that in the beat than the fucking what the bottom right there yeah the i swear is that not the discord notification i swear it's gotta be discord I didn't, I didn't i didn't pick up on that i didn't yeah, think that, that was discord but uh, that's that, what it made that, me think of if like, it I is could, i could be wrong that's hilarious <laughs> i think that's what it is isn't it i got to look it up to be fair but, um, yeah, when I heard that, I'm like, no, that's got to be JP Mafia. And then I look it up, I see it's JP Mafia. I'm like, okay. Yeah, no, no, that beat was super psychedelic. And um, I also want to say, I've always thought Denzel was quite good with the hooks. <laughs> On this project, I thought he had some really nice hooks, like the walking hook. Uh, the last mm -hmm. had a really good every day could be honest day. I thought that was cool. Yeah, um, it is quite a catchy one, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, what would you say would be like your favourite tunes off this project overall? To be honest, I think my two favourite songs are actually the first two singles. Walking and Zatoichi. Walking yeah. and Zatoichi, yeah. Sure thing, sure thing. Yeah, they are both but, really strong, to be fair. I, Zatoichi, I also thought, felt even better with the album. I'd probably say Zatoichi would be my favourite from this album in the end. Yeah. I think you're going to know my reason why as well, because I <laughs> I had already mentioned it. Yeah, yeah, you got that DMV switch up. Yeah. Yeah, it's, that's such an exciting moment. I do like that. The thing is, though, like, it's not really... It's not a criticism as such, but okay. the only thing that I did find a bit odd about the song is how slow ties vocals are mixed on the chorus. Really? I didn't yeah. think it was him to begin with. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, it didn't really because it's so distorted. It's kind of hard to make out slow ties. I thought it was just Denzel with a vocal yeah, effect. I can see how it would sound. Yeah, it does kind of sound like that. I think the distortion does kind of add to the chaotic kind of nature of it. But um, yeah, I could see why maybe it wouldn't work or it could be a bit jarring because it is a, it is quite a switch up. It's quite a bold daring switch up when it comes in you know and i think that definitely contributes towards that i think the music video to zatoichi is really cool oh, as well you know the martial uh, arts oh, stuff as well that's so yeah how he's got the blindfold on and he's kind of like yeah becoming the master and shit so, and he says like i'm leading the blind like that shit's tight man yeah i do like the imagery he's got going on with this album some of those issues i was referring to before do do crop up you know like uh on the last i would say lyrically the last it kind of kind of enters that same ballpark i was talking about with taboo i'm just not that engaged with it like i agree with a lot of what he says you know he's talking about like he's basically just talking about there's too many homeless like a lot of problems in the world you know you go outside you know you wear a mask trying not get sick it's very bleak and this and that 
And talking like, shit about the president again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talking shit. Donald Duck, Donald Trump. What's the difference? You know, <laughs> I was just listening to the lyrics thinking like, yeah, sure. True. But like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like what Denzel's bringing to this conversation is just like, it's just very vague observations. You know what I mean? That's just kind of how I feel when mm. Denzel talks about like, I get he's talking from the heart. I can hear that. And it's all weighing on his mind. And his, the performance does, does say that. But I guess just the, the lyrics he chooses and the way he words it. I'm just like, man. I don't know, I felt the same way with Angels, I felt the same way with The Ills. I was just like, I don't mm-hmm. know if I'm really feeling like just the way he writes. I just feel like he's not the voice uh, for this kind of thing, at least for me. In relation to The Last as well, I think I thought the, the instrumental, until the very end of the song, where you got that really, again, jazzy sort oh, of that outro. Oh, outro, yeah, I remember that. That was nice. I think until then, <laughs> it just sounds a bit plain to me. I feel that, you know, yeah, the beat wasn't that crazy on that song. Especially when the other beats are so fucking nice like this is production generally and espe- really good. especially considering yeah. as well he's talking about you know he's talking about politics again you know mm. coming from you know it was sort of like what he was talking about on you know that pig feet song that came out a couple of years ago oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. i remember that holy shit who was on that song that was terrace martin terrace Mar- and um, was it kareem riggins on there too or not yeah, yeah there was, that's yeah, it yeah, 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 yeah okay coming from that you know i would have expected a bit more from Denzel. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. That song was a riot, man. I feel like it would have been a bit more, maybe maybe more convincing for me as a listener mm. if the beat kind of spoke to the same outrage, I guess, he was describing, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and the beat was a bit tame. Sure, I, 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 I see what you're saying. I guess, like, that disconnect is still, is still present, and that kind of leads me to just, like, not feel that, like, invested or fascinated by a lot of the content, but as far as the music goes, I feel like that's where this record does shine. And there were a couple tunes, like, uh, like the Ills, again, the beat yeah. on that one, the Boom Bappy beat is cool, but it doesn't really, like, blow my mind like that. It feels like a sort of end credits track. Yeah, I, yeah, sure, yeah, I suppose so, as an outro could have been could have been a bit more of an impression left for me, personally. The Smell of Death with the Thundercat beat, Mixing on that one was a little dodgy. Everything's so loud on that song. Yeah, yeah. Like, I've, I look, man. Like, I, I hate to say this because I do love Thundercat. I just, seen, I just saw him live and shit blew my mind. Right? <laughs> but man, his studio recordings, man, they do not do him justice. I swear. Like on his albums as well. Like the mix. Mixing's is... always been an issue for yeah, him. Yeah, I, I don't know what's up with that. Because like, literally, like you, you hear that and you, you don't think, oh yeah, live, this would sound amazing. But it fucking sounds insane. Like, like I'm hearing the same songs. <laughs> Uh, live that I've been listening to that I'm like man the mix thing's a little weird and I'm hearing it live and like, this is the biggest bop of all fucking time I'm like why, where was like your studio recordings are not doing you justice then <laughs> <laughs> all of the songs I have that issue with that he played live I was like yo this shit sounds insane like why does it not sound anything like this if he did a live version of all of his albums then they'd probably surpass all the studio recordings legit and I feel like that's the same issue with the smell of death like the mix is just a bit squashed I'm like what's going on like and the song itself it just feels a bit inessential I think the smell of death as well Uh, the beat sounds you know almost sort of 90s west coast hip hop inspired as well yeah yeah definitely with the sirens with the sort with the with the g-funk you know synths and you know like you said the sirens so it's cool to hear him dabbling into those new sounds I guess yeah I also wish Sanjuro was longer I fucking love that song uh, oh I love, I love that song yeah, as well 454 when he comes in is so hype oh my god I, I know it. yeah no I wish that was a bit longer personally but still a good track all the same when it comes to problems uh, what, what, what would you say oh. I'd say the main song that I, I'm just really not all that crazy about is X-Wing. X-Wing, yeah. I kind of like that song, man. I can't lie, bro. Is it like the vocal thing he does? The vocals are yeah. one thing that sure. I have an issue with, especially on the on the chorus. I think he just maybe needs a bit more time to perfect that style. I feel like me being such a big Baby Keem fan probably helped because I feel like that's like <laughs> his Baby Keem song, basically. One line that stuck out for being just particularly you know, off on this song. Fuck a TikTok, bought a new watch. No, <laughs> I didn't even catch that. <laughs> I didn't even catch that line, bro. Fuck a TikTok, bought a new watch. That's actually really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Is that now your least favourite line oh, in no, that no. song? <laughs> that's, that's actually really bad. I feel like maybe X-Wing for me, man, I feel like that'll probably fit in like Zoo, I guess. Any other issues um, you want to speak on that you might have with the album? While I don't, dislike the song strictly i think angels was perhaps one of the least memorable tracks for me oh yeah maybe it's because melt session one kind of did it better <laughs> yeah you know what i mean <laughs> maybe that's why that's kind of how i feel about it like angels is cool but 
you had the first track, which kind of gave you the same sort of thing, that just was just a fucking amazing song. So. Yeah, I, yeah I, I feel that. Yeah, I, I don't hate it or anything. It's not bad, but um, yeah, sure, sure, fair enough. I feel you. A couple of songs in the middle that I want to highlight yeah, as well yeah, because about... they are two. They have become two of my favorite songs yeah, on the yeah. LP. How do you feel about Ain't No Way? How do you feel about that one? That was one of the songs uh, I was going to talk about yeah, because yeah. I I like that song a lot to be honest. Really? Yeah. Okay. I, I, yeah, I'm I'm kind of um. I'm in two minds about it. Certainly the album's posse cut, isn't it? Sure, yeah, sure thing. I'd say I'm steering more towards enjoying the song overall, because I do love how it comes in with that, like, really just, like, freaking almost hallucinatory uh, black feature when he comes in with his Yeah. Hook. And then the hook comes in with, Ain't no way. It's just like, wakes me. Ain't no way. <laughs> it just wakes me right up. I'm like, holy shit, here we go. Then Rico comes in with the craziest. Yeah, I was just about to say, <sighs> that's the most I've enjoyed a Rico Nasty verse in quite some oh, time. Oh, yeah. You know? She sounded fucking great on that song. I thought Nightmare Vacation, her last album, that was terrible. That, that, oh, honestly. yeah, that album was awful. Yeah, I hated that album, man. I was happy to hear a Rico verse. I'm like, okay, I, this is why I ever liked Rico was for shit like this, you know? Yeah. I then, think Rage was the song of her that got me into her in the first Ra place Rage, you know when she yeah. went all out on that track that song's so good yeah i guess the reason i'm in two minds is because the second half whilst the beat is like lovely i guess i would have preferred it if like we just kept that first thing going like just kept that first fucking beat i would love to have heard jid and denzel i feel like they would have fit way better on that beat man i feel like a little disappointed that we didn't get like a crazy just all out you know, because they would all sound so sick on it. Overall, the song is good, though. Like, I would say I'm steering more towards liking it, but I feel like it's a mis now, bit of a miss. I know we talked. I know we talked a lot about like weak lyrics on the album, but this song yeah. has probably my personal favorite. Oh, I already know. The, I already know the lyric. I already know the exact lyric you're talking about. The Run the Jewels one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. I knew it. Run the Jewels because I kill a mic in any LP. It's genius. It's fucking beautiful. Right? That gave me the biggest smile when I heard that. I was like. Fuck yeah. Yeah, I feel like the Jid verse is a little tame. I don't know. I didn't get nothing out of the Jid verse. Not that he did yeah, that. Yeah, I, I see what you mean. Yeah. I, I feel like, I mean, maybe it's just like right after the Rico verse. It's like, bro, how can you follow that? That verse was so crazy. I'm kind of into minds. For me, it's like a mid tier song, but it's got a lot about it that's very exciting. And I appreciate the risk of it being more of like a multi phase odyssey, but. Mm -hmm. I'm like, man, you know what? You know what? I'll take what you've given me. I appreciate it. But for me, man, if it was, if I was the creative director of this song, bro, I would have had everyone go crazy on that first beat. We'll save Rico till the end, just to have that one last bit of oh, energy, just yeah, to yeah, yeah, leave yeah. you just completely overwhelmed after bro, the song's finished. Yeah, that, that Rico verse is definitely a standout moment. How how do we feel about um, Troubles then? Is that the other song you were going to talk about? That was the other song, yeah. 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 Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. How do you feel about Troubles? I wasn't that mad on it when I first heard it when it was released as a single. The more I listened to the album and. Uh, the song in general i just get a lot of enjoyment out of it you know yeah, it's really? just it feels like a bit of a breath of fresh air after a few slightly mm. more not necessarily like downbeat songs but you know to have the energy sort of pick back up again and just have <laughs> something a little bit more poppy exactly you know, it's it was yeah. nice bro that's crazy literally i'm not even gonna lie to you everyone that i've spoken to about troubles has said the same thing they've said they first heard it and it was like what what's this this isn't that good but then it grows on you, man. It really grows on you. I've had the same thing myself, you know? Like, it's a sick tune. Like, the T-Pain features has so much, like, um... Mm -hmm. So much, like, charisma. You know, he's got so much charisma on that song. And they, they play off each other surprisingly well. I feel like the only thing about the song that maybe rubs me the wrong way would probably be, the again, the distortion on the... The vocals at the start sound a little silly. Troubles at the time, can't be. It like, has, like, that distortion. It sounds a little awkward, in my opinion. Still, overall, the beat, very, very colourful. Uh, the charisma's there. Yeah, no, I think it's a tune, man. And like you said, it does wonders for the album's, uh, like, pace. So I guess that kind of covered... I guess there's also Mental. We haven't talked about that, which I thought Mental had one of the best beats on the album. It was a cool little moment of a... Um, I want to say it sounded like maybe he was kind of in denial or naivety when he said, like, it'll be fine once I've melted my eyes because it's all in your mental. And that's kind of how I took mm. that. And maybe he's, like, thinking, oh, if he melts his eyes, he can't see the problems. Maybe it will all go away. And if he just mentally treats it that way. And, like, it's, like, yep. in, a, in a moment of, like, you know, trying to battle that. Because a lot of this album is him sort of confronting the things about the world that are ugly and, like, trying to accept that and just come to terms with that. And, and accept that these are things that maybe he can't fix himself as much as he might want to. I thought mm -hmm. Mental was was one of the songs that spoke to that the most. There was one line that I was a bit like, uh, it was the first line when he's like, let me take you higher than um, herbalists on treetops or something. I was like, <laughs> I don't know. That's a little, that's a little, uh. Overall, that song was, did you, how did you feel about um, 
Uh, mental. Uh, it was nice while it was on, but it didn't really leave much of an impression yeah. on me, to be honest. Okay, yeah. For that album, what it's going for, I feel like it does add something. Uh, but maybe maybe it's still not one that I'm gonna like rush out to. I think to. Mental and Angel are the two songs where I have sort of exactly the same reaction. You know, they're, they're cool while they're on, but outside of the album, right. I don't see myself right. coming back to them at all. Sure thing, I hear you. This 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 brings us to I think uh, the big question of, of yeah. the day: What's our score gonna be, and where do we rank this record in the in the Denzel discography? Do you want to begin, or shall I? Oh, you know what? I'm gonna start this one. I'm gonna start this one. Whilst, like I said, imperfect, I've got my issues with it and stuff, but man, you know what? I can't even lie. This is a quality batch of songs that clearly took a lot of heart and effort to pull together. Solid production, features were there. I would give this a confident, happy 7 out of 10, man. Uh, it didn't, like, strike a chord with me, like, resonate with me like that, but I really did enjoy, and I do enjoy, listening to it whenever I do give it the time of day, so that's mm. definitely worth something. And Denzel, man, this is a cool progression, and um, I think it's really cool yeah. hearing him take on the, the jazzy production that he's been going with on this album. I'd say this might be his second best project. This could definitely change, like, tomorrow, but for now, I'd say this is his second best project underneath Imperial and above Zoo. I do really admire the, again, this is arguably his most artistically sort of daring and mm -hmm. bold album that he's released so far sure, with all the different musical influences that he's taken in. I think there's a lot of focus in between, you know, not only in the songs themselves, but mm. in terms of sequencing, you know, mm. the transitions mostly really, really smooth and just yeah. helps with the flow of the album a lot. I do agree there are a lot of imperfections on here you know especially lyrically a couple of songs here and there that i could maybe do without as well in terms of my score i would i would probably say a seven out of ten for this as well yeah because okay. i do think it's i do think it's a pretty damn good album but it's not like album of the year material i don't think sure but, sure sure but i still enjoy this a lot my ranking of this i would I'd say, yeah, Imperial at the top still. Then Zoo for me. Yeah, okay. Then, I, I actually thought Unlocked was great as well. Would you put Unlocked above uh, above this, do you reckon? I would, personally. You would, yeah? Okay. You know what, I can't sleep on Unlocked too much. Now, when I first heard it, I thought it was like, that's alright. But then I can't lie, it is a lot more replayable than, yeah. than I thought. I've come back to it more than I did expect, so I won't... I won't not that at all fair enough man. imperial zoo unlocked then this i reckon okay okay and then taboo i think i gotta go imperial this zoo unlocked taboo uh if oh wait oh wait wait wait, wait. if you want to count it uh if you want to count it actually ah oh, if you want to count it i would put 32 zell planet shrooms underneath i've never actually listened to that you know yeah, to be fair you gotta take it off streaming it's just 32 zell you can listen to yeah. are we going to count um are we going to count the 13 ep as well oh sh i forgot about the 13 ep oh i, I don't even like that ep man i can't even like do you not <laughs> no nah, bro I'm, I, I don't really care about it like that but if we count that i'll probably put that at the bottom as the sort of lead up to taboo it was yeah it, it, was it definitely, fine, it definitely I think, worked you know? i sure. i like the energy on there a lot sure. it definitely mm. it set the stage for the tone of taboo quite well like the 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 rough kind Kind of like distorted kind of feel it has like i feel like that's aged a bit badly like the mixing on that mm. just doesn't really hit like that for me but that's just me obviously i know a lot of people do rate that ep but for me I i'd probably put that at the bottom but i would put 32 zell planet shrooms i would put that right underneath zoo at fourth place above unlocked so it would go overall imperial at the top met my eye second zoo third 32 zell fourth fifth would be um unlocked sixth would be taboo and then seventh would be the 13 EP. I've never listened to Nostalgic 64, but I know people rate that Me as neither. Well. Yeah, I never got around to that one. Maybe I will do that one day. I do hear people like that project a lot. But yeah, that's our rankings and our scores. There we go. Man, I'm, enjoy I'm enjoying this album. Like still, right now, I'll pit play and have a good time. It's it's good, man. Yeah, I, I might go for a run this afternoon and then stick it on again. I don't yeah, know. it's easy to come back to, you know. All right, well, I guess that will conclude our discussion, our review on Melt My Eyes, See Your Future by Denzel Curry. Daniel, thank you. For coming on. Here. Thank you very much for having me on today. Of course, bro. Go subscribe to Dan Kingston, please, right now. I'll put a link in the description. You can see our Sims review on there and plenty of other videos he's got as well, some reactions. Have a wonderful day. Go stream Denzel Curry's new album. See y'all soon. Take care. Bye. Yo, yo, Dan. Hold on, hold on. Oh, sorry, man.
my uh, what's it? My microphone memory card just just got just got full. No, it's okay. It's okay. I'm gonna quickly fix it. We'll just jump right back in. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> it's, I just saw a card full. I'm like, man, fuck off, man. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> are you serious? Now the card's full? Oh man. All right, that's cool. I'll just uh, these are for my January. I'll just delete these. All right, we're good. We're good. We're good. I'll just eject the card and we'll just continue. Nothing happened. No problems. Immaculate timing. I swear these these calls are cut. I don't know what it is. <laughs> All right, I don't know what it is about me. Maybe I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm no. Maybe it's maybe the, I'm bad omen. Maybe it's the Sainsbury's Tesco rivalry kicking in. Oh no! Don't <laughs> start. This. Hold on, hold on. There we go. What are you doing? Oh my god, yes. Okay, perfect. Alright. Um, what was the oh my god yes that I just heard? That, that was, everything's working fine now, we're good. So that was a celebration. Good. <laughs> <laughs>